that's why my middle out compression software is going to be the absolute best way that we can revolutionize lossless audio compression and and really re like remake this industry. So are you willing to invest in my company? Uh, look, thanks, Reed. I think uh, your technology is really interesting and all that, but we've seen a thousand compression plays and none of them have been all that successful. So why do you think you'll succeed and uh, where others haven't? I have the best tech. Uh, our algorithms are better than anyone else out there. I, I don't know how you can't see it. I, and I follow the path to success, and <laughs> I, I don't what, what's the problem? It's, I, I, it's, yeah. Is it because I'm wearing a suit? I need, if I brought a hoodie, would you invest then? <laughs> Pause. So this for me is one of the most important moments of my career. I'm grinding away at a zombie job at Hooli, and I'm unhappy with my life. <laughs> and I have this amazing algorithm that's gonna help me just realize my full potential and I'm gonna be the happiest person if I can make this new product that really changes the world. And that's what I came to Stanford for originally anyways, right? But I was so fraught with anxiety. My palms are sweaty, I'm nervous, I'm pitting out below this jacket. <laughs> and I blew it. But what if there was a different approach I could take? Today, Robert, Leslie, who's Leslie? Robert, Victoria, and Audrey and I are going to show you the tools of improvisation that will allow you, well, one, to celebrate failure, but allow you to really change the outcome of these kinds of situations so that instead of freaking out, you really can take the opportunity to embrace and just become everyone you, the person you want to be. Um, we're going to walk through a couple of specific scenarios where you're going to learn anxiety management. Uh, we're going to learn a little bit of how we can brainstorm in an effective way. And then we're going to learn, lastly, how to just be a better teammate and coworker for your friends. So with that, let's hear from Robert. Thank you. So you guys all just saw Reed sweat bullets in front of a board of VC investors and quite frankly in front of all of you guys. Uh, so a, a, an important lesson in improv is to celebrate failure. The, when, when an actor makes a mistake, he misses a cue or she messes up a line, they're taught to smile, take a bow, and say, ta-da, I messed up. Now this is really important because it transforms that negative energy you have around making a mistake into a celebration of boldness. It's a way of saying, I, I, it's a way of owning your mistakes and saying, the show goes on. You're basically saying, I took a risk, I failed, I'm still here, I learned something. Ta-da. Now, of course, it'd be pretty awkward to take a bow in the middle of a boardroom. But how do we transfer the lessons, the mentality of the failure bow into the business world? I have three tips for you today. First, greet that anxiety. Accept it. Let it become part of you. Now, I personally get very anxious before presentations, sometimes get a little sweaty, it's not good, and I try to fight it. But I've learned that the more I try to untie that knot in my stomach, the tighter it gets, the more nervous I become. I've since then learned to just let it be, recognize that it's part of the process. Say, hmm, there's that sinking feeling in my stomach again. That's good, that's normal, I should expect this. It's part of the process because I'm about to do something great. Now, the nervousness doesn't go away, but by naming it and by calling it out, I've taken away some of the power it has over me. The next thing that you can do is be average. Be okay with the ordinary. Now, a lot of the stress that we place on ourselves come from our own expectations to do great things, to, to really excel, to be stellar, to knock that ball out of the park. But let's just be honest for a minute here. Those are our expectations of ourselves. That's not what the audience expects. The audience expects the business to go on, the show to go on. They expect nothing more than out of the ordinary. Now, I'm not saying don't be stellar. I'm not saying don't excel. You should absolutely do that. But at the same time, be kind to yourselves. If the outcome is just OK, if the outcome is just average, that's perfectly acceptable. As a matter of fact, that's expected. Lastly, embrace the unknown. See it as an opportunity to learn. Oftentimes, we get into the situation of a me versus the world situation where you throw a question at me, 
I don't know how to answer it. I feel like it's an attack and they get anxious because I'm defenseless. Let's see if we can reframe that. Rather than say, this is an attack on me, say, this question that I don't know how to answer is an invitation. It's an invitation to say, hmm, that's a really good question that I don't know the answer. Can you help me with it? Or can we work on it together? By that reframing, you've turned this question that's put you on the spot into a patchable conversation. So the next time you're in that boardroom, that the next time that you mess up, the next time you feel that anxiousness, take a mental bow, recognize your mistake, and move on. Speaking of move on, let's move on to our next scene with Audrey. All right, guys, it's brainstorming time. We need to come up with a way to increase our sales on our product. What do you think? What if we offered to pay off all their student loans if they did a free trial? Oh my god, that's going to be so expensive. Uh, how about we meet them person to person? Also, that's going to take forever. It's not going to work. Pause. What we just witnessed was a very ineffective brainstorming session where every idea thrown out, Victoria just said no and shut it down. <laughs> in improv, the number one rule is say yes to everything. It's the first thing that you learn as an improviser. So suppose we're doing an improv scene that I'm in with another actor uh, in the wilderness, for example. And I say, let's climb this mountain. If the other actor says, nah, I don't really want to, kind of kills the whole scene, right? Instead, we're taught to say yes. So if the other actor says, yes, let's go climb that mountain, it helps the scene move forward. We can use this same principle of saying yes and apply it back to this business brainstorming session. So if Reed had, asked the, or had suggested, what if we send emails out? If Victoria just says no, that kind of kills the whole vibe. So instead, apply the principle of saying yes, and if she said yes, Reed, great idea, that creates a much more positive brainstorming environment. And obviously in brainstorming, you're not gonna end up actually taking every idea proposed. But simply by saying yes, it creates a lot more creativity and a much more effective session. Sometimes a no can be disguised as a yes but. So back to our improv example, if I say let's climb this mountain and the other actor says yes, but actually I'm afraid of heights. They've said yes, but effectively, that's a no. So in improv, instead of just saying yes, what we want to say is yes and. So yes, let's climb this mountain, and let's try to do it as fast as we possibly can. So adding something, contributing more to move the scene forward. And now taking this back once again to our brainstorming session, an even more effective response than if Victoria just said yes, let's send emails, would be to add to it, to say yes, and we could have a promo code in that email so that people are even more likely to click to buy our product. Saying yes and, one of the most effective tools from improv that we can apply to brainstorming. And now let's take it back to another scene for our final scene. Hey, uh, so Victoria, we've got this final project coming up in this class, oh, and yeah. I'm out of ideas. Like, what do you think we should do? Ah, uh, what about something about improv? People like improv, right? Oh man, yeah, that's a great idea. I don't think it's been done before. Oh, we should totally yeah. suggest that. Totally. Hey guys, so we need to decide on our final topic. What do you think? Any ideas? Yeah. Well, um, oh, I think we should do improv. I mean, I don't think it's been done before. Oh, and right, right. I love that. Yeah, I think, I think we're both really. My idea. I think it's your idea. I literally just said it. I okay. I just came up with it. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> what we just saw here was called stealing the show. And that violates a top rule in improv that is making your partner look great. In improv, there's a saying that goes, every actor is supposed to be a supporting actor. But how do you exactly do that? Top one rule, golden rule, just listen. What exactly do I mean by that? Let me show you a story. In a Tibetan temple, an old master was trying to show a young monk the truth to life. He held up a teapot, and started pouring tea into the cup. And as the tea was overflowing, the young monk was getting very anxious and the old master was like, well, you are like this teacup. You're already filled with ideas and thoughts. You need to empty yourself in order to take in anything that I say. So just listen. 
In modern society, it is way too easy to listen just enough to respond instead of listening to understand the whole scene. And that is why either be it in improv or in a business scene, we should listen to understand the whole scene instead of listen just enough to respond to what is being said. So now you're thinking, okay, I'm gonna listen, I'm gonna sit back and enjoy the show put on by my partners. But guess what? You're still part of the show. So when your partner is stuck on a scene, instead of just gloating at that awkward silence and just listening to that awkward silence, throw, throw out an idea like, oh, hey, it's bright and sunny outside, to allow your partner to say, oh, okay, let's go to a picnic at the Oval. And that would be the same case in business things. In a conference room, initiate an idea. Even if it's not the best idea ever, it will allow your teammates to come up with maybe better ideas. And last but not least, add, add not replace. This is another version of the yes and attitude that Audrey just mentioned before. Because you want to make your teammates feel like the end pro product is their proud baby. It's their idea so that they can put in the maximum effort into the entire project. Because by making your teammates and making your partners the heroes of the show, you're actually becoming the hero of the team. And now let's take it back to read. We've all been in these really awful situations where we've just felt down in the dumps after we blew a big meeting because we were too nervous, we couldn't get that VC pitch made right. Or even worse, we were working with a coworker who stabbed us in the back on their path to power. <laughs> and we're gonna face those situations again. That's gonna happen to you, to me, to all of us. But now we're armed with a new set of tools that allows us to choose how we deal with those problems. And making that choice to change your attitude can revolutionize the outcome. Robert taught us to celebrate failure. <laughs> Audrey to say yes and. <laughs> and Victoria to be a better teammate. <laughs> and whether you're trying to pitch a VC or you're working out an issue with your spouse or just trying to be playful again, just remember to make work like play and think like an improviser. And you may just surprise yourself with the kind of creativity you come up with and the kind of solutions you work out to problems that seemed otherwise difficult. Thank you. <laughs>